have to praise God. Uh, children, uh, you are dismissed. God wants to bless you. So I, First uh, Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 4, was our text and is still our text. A message I have entitled, Bewitched. Bewitched. And in the morning, I did allude uh, to the fact that uh, there, is, there is at work when the power of uh, words when they are inspired of the devil uh, to set uh, certain things uh, to begin to be working in and through our lives. And just by way of introduction, in 2013, I believe, I was scheduled for a minor operation, that's what uh, after the examinations are taken, uh, prior to that day, so the doctors determined that uh, okay, it's going to be a minor operation, a minor surgery, you will just have to walk in, uh, there will be no admission, you will walk in, and after we do the operation, uh, you will come out. And so, uh, sure enough, the day came, I went uh, for that uh, uh, operation, it was in the afternoon, at UTA, and so, uh, the first guy walks in, he had a growth on his hand, I said, when he moved it, uh, for me, I had a growth that just down beneath, uh, beneath my, 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 just here, and so as I went uh, for that operation, I am uh, sleeping or lying on the, uh, how do you call it, the butcher table. I am lying there, and, uh, and uh, the doctor, he, he begins, uh, the, it was a, a local anesthesia kind of an operation, and so I was aware of what was happening. And so he's, 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 he's cutting me and along the process, about 20, 30 minutes into the operation, he speaks, he says, uh, this is very dangerous. I will have to stop here. Uh, I, I, I didn't think that it would be this risky to do it. And so he's not, he's not touching an animal. It's me he's cutting. And I'm, I'm listening to these words. He has cut me open and, and I can feel what he's doing. And then he utters those words. This is dangerous. There has to be a, a change of course of direction. I will not proceed. And so uh, he says, uh, so let me, let, me, let me tie you up. <laughs> now you've cut me open. <laughs> And you want to tie me up for a later date. Sure enough, he did that. I came out of that uh, ward, uh, that uh, theater, defeated because of the words that were uttered. If the man just closed me up and said, Mr. Akum, we are giving you an appointment for six months to come, I would not have had any problem with that. But the fact that there were words that he spoke, that and those words landed into my ears, something began to spin in my mind to the point that I began to wonder, did I make the right decision to even in the first place to be able to undergo this surgery? And I want to consider, like I've mentioned, be weak. Again, don't think of being be weak uh, 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 in, the, in the sense of uh, uh, the old uh, grandma lady in the village uh, flying around uh, but the wish that is evening are coming from the words that are spoken. Our text I read, uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 1 to 4, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with his words. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die. Are you glad that God doesn't always answer our prayer? <laughs> and saying, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father. But I want to consider firstly, tonight in this part two of, our, of, of, of my sermon, the timing 
of the assault, the timing of this assault that came upon Elijah, the timing of it. Listen to me tonight. Words when spoken, like I mentioned, they may not be intentional, but the enemy of our soul he is able to listen to the words that are spoken over our lives and he takes advantage, he latches on those words and he begins uh, to take, they begin to take residence in our thoughts. These can be tormenting, they can be consuming, like I've mentioned. Uh, that was around May when this happened, when I went to that doctor's appointment and for a period of a month, uh, I was tormented in my mind. I was consumed with those words which that doctor had spoken. And so we see here that for Elijah, these words came at a time when he was most vulnerable. Our text, the Bible would highlight to us, they came after a hard fought victory. I made that mention this morning uh, in reference to what Elijah had done. He called for a contest between the prophets of Baal and himself. And you know your Bible that he overcame, he became victorious by the grace of God. The God who answered by fire came down and he consumed the sacrifice. And you can see that God had done something to Elijah. Uh, uh, he had, uh, he had, uh, he had uh, 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 felt very weary and very tired because of that contest. And Paul would I lie to you and I in Galatians. Chapter 6, verse 9, he says, Do not grow weary in doing well, for in due season you shall reap a reward. Many times, even believers here this evening, we grow weary after time of laboring, after time of giving of ourselves, giving into the ministry, giving into the work of God, giving to the furtherance of the kingdom of God. But many times we become weary because we look back and say, uh, is it worth it? What I've given to, is there anything uh, that, uh, that is tangible uh, to me, uh, for me to be able to associate my laboring in the kingdom of God? How does he react? The Bible says he flees. We all react differently to the assaults of hell. Elijah, he ran away. When we were doing the Cup of the uh, Southern Campaign, in Toma, there was a man that came for prayer. He's fearful, he's scared. He's narrating to me, he says, Pastor, my relatives have spoken words over my life because of the wrangles they had with my father, my late father. And so they have sworn against me. They have spoken words. They have said, I will not reach the age of so and so. And here I am. And the guy is trembling. He's fearful. And he tells me, he says, I've gone round. I've gone round to prophets. And he dips into his pocket. He removes a small bottle of anointing oil. He says, one prophet gave me this where I went. And he said, hold on to this. Keep it on your body. Wherever you go, this is a, this is a protection for you. Those words will not amount to anything. Uh, this will protect you. And I looked at him, something within me raged. Something within me was angered. I said, uh, that is idolatry. That is witchcraft. That is not in the Bible. There is nowhere oil can bring a protection over your life. Uh, and I prayed for him. Uh, he dropped his, 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 his so-called anointing oil on the altar. And we prayed. Uh, we broke the curse uh, that was released by the words uh, that were uttered over his life. Listen to me. We we react differently uh, to the fears that we face in our lives. There's people here tonight. You wear certain things around you <laughs> for protection. Certain bracelets. Now there's even commercialized. Pentecostals have even commercialized bumper stickers. Remember the famous one? There was a hand like this from Nigeria. Huh? And that hand was dripping blood. Once you put this on your vehicle, you will never be involved in any car accident. The angels of heaven will protect you. That's Pentecostal witchcraft. The 
that's what it is. Oh, buy this bracelet. Wear it wherever you go. You will never be faced with any misfortune. That is Pentecostal witchcraft. And we see in our text, Elijah is terrified by the words of this woman. Listen to verse 9. And there he went into a cave. Is this the same man that defeated 450 prophets of Baal? And now by the words of this wicked woman, he runs. And the Bible says he's hiding in a cave and spent the night in that place and behold the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him what are you doing here like even God is surprised sometimes at where we find ourselves what are you doing here my son consulting what are you doing here my daughter his response I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have torn down your altars and they have killed your prophets with the sword. He is isolating. He is isolating himself. Years of living for God seems not to have paid back. And now at the point when he's most vulnerable, the Bible says he runs away in, in isolation. Proverbs 18 verse 1 gives us an idea of what it means when a man or a woman begins to isolate themselves. It says, he who isolates himself seeks his own desires. He rages against all wise judgment. When a man or a woman begins to a sideline, they begin to uh, isolate themselves away from the herd, away from the crowd. They are nowhere to be seen. When people begin to miss church, there's a reason. There's something at work uh, behind the sin and hear the right of Proverbs who tell us he says when a man or a woman distances themselves from the flock or from the body uh, corporate of Jesus Christ it says they seek their own desires their things that are cooking deep within them and he says they rage against all wise judgment I've been a pastor for 13 years now. I've gone in people's homes trying to encourage, trying to speak sense. And sometimes, what really is at stake is simply laying on of hands and praying and saying, God grant them their mind again. That's all they need. God grant them their mind again. I've walked in homes where it's confusion. They're thinking, I am against them. I said, listen, I left Livala where fans are blowing, where there's fresh air, and I came here, and you think I'll be against you? In Matero, back then, when we blew fans, just would rise because there was no flow. confusion he wasn't feeling appreciated for all that he was standing for his labors rewards and listen to me the devil is an opportunist he comes at an opportune time the bible declares uh, during the time during the temptation of jesus christ in matthew chapter 4 uh, he tempted him three times uh, and as he tempted him uh, at the end of that uh, season of temptation uh, the bible would record he says and the devil left him until an opportune time the devil knows when to strike he waits for an opportune time And we see this in verse 10. He says, I alone am left. It wasn't true. There were prophets that were still alive. These words come when fear of a man begins to replace his faith in God. Up to this point, it was the word of the Lord that came to Elijah. And Elijah responded to that word. But now... The word of the Lord is being drowned by the words of Jezebel. 
Now the word of the Lord has no effect over the life of Elijah because of the words of this wicked woman uh, which she spoke to this man. All of a sudden, his perspective changes. A man who was having success, now he's feeling hopeless. He's feeling no way out. Helplessness was the order of the day. Verse 10, I alone am left and they seek to take my life. And if you examine closely tonight, you can also see the common evidence of the words of warfare. It seems like these are two different people here, but it's the same man. In our text, the Bible says he ran for his life. Confusion was at play in his mind. He knew the will of God. He knew the, will, the word of God. But now he's acting confused. He's acting confused. Our text again shows us that Elijah is consumed by the words of Jezebel. He cannot think of anything else. He's consumed by the words of Jezebel. He feels condemned. I am no better than my fathers. Meanwhile, the scripture says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. I was talking to a brother a few months ago. Went to visit him. And he tells me, he says, Pastor, I feel condemned. I'm like, you, you know the Bible? Now, let me do what pastors do. We repeat to you what you already know. Let me read to you what the Bible says. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Are you still in Christ? Yes, pastor. But why are you feeling condemned? The Bible says there is no condemnation. And so it's a spirit of confusion. There's contention in relationships. He says the children of Israel have forsaken you. They have killed your prophets. All of a sudden, he's coming to a wrong judgment. He's saying, the people that I'm working for, the people that I'm laboring for, they have killed your prophets, and, and, and I alone am left. That is not true, Elijah. The reality is tonight, if this can happen to Elijah, how many know it can happen to the best of all of us? It can happen to the best of all of us. No one is immune. Though he was such a great man, he fell under the spell of demonic words. He lost. He lost sight of the victories of God in his life. Almost immediately, he forgot what God had done for him and for his people. There are people here tonight. Your minds have been tormented in an unusual way. Somebody spoke words. And those words, they have lodged in your mind. They are tormenting you. Like Jezebel. Getting in the head of Elijah. You are finding yourself confused and bewitched. While we were on the uh, uh, Copper Belt campaign, I, I joined uh, the team in, 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 in Chingola. That very morning when, 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 when I was there, uh, uh, around, uh, somewhere around uh, 11 hours, received an email from uh, uh, these people that I do some consultancy for. And so I'm, I'm responsible for certain things. And so I received an email. These, the owners are in America. And so I checked my emails, I received an email, and the email was, was, was very short, less than, less than five words. It says, Simon, what is this that I'm seeing with so, 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 so? I read that email, and it's true, but because it was coming from this owner, <laughs> my day was spoiled. I began to make phone calls back to the office. I'm saying, look, you guys, uh, the boss has just emailed me uh, and uh, uh, attend to ABCD. Uh, uh, after a few, a few hours, I call back again. Has that been attended to? Uh, up until in prayer, God gave me the victory. God, it dawned on me. He says, Simon, you are, you are in Chingola. This guy is in America. You are in Chingola and you want Lusaka to do. Listen, you cannot be in two places. I, I gained the victory. I, 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 I almost laid my, my, my hands on my head and said, God, set me free. 
set me free. And immediately there was a freedom that came. Words have good power. They can spoil your day. Like Jezebel. Elijah found himself confused and bewitched by this woman. Let me look then secondly at spiritual victory. Spiritual victory. In the morning, I told you a story of what happened in Kabul the first night. Dealt with that spirit of heaviness that I felt and addressed. But after finishing preaching, came down. As I came down, I found the pastor of the church talking to, I think it was Pastor Austin or Pastor Danny. He's explaining to them that what I said was actually confirmation of what he was going through the previous weeks in his church and he was very specific that there was a man that came to him and began to speak words to pastor christopher and katya telling him that you will not succeed unless you work with me listen to me tonight no man no man we thank god for the cooperation of men and women but for you to begin to think that the kingdom of god will only function with you in it He begins to tell Chris, he says, unless you work with me, you will not succeed here. I have been long here. And he begins to cite people that have struggled. And he begins to speak. And, and so I'm, I, I joined the conversation. I'm asking myself, so what did you do? He says, Pastor, Pastor, actually, before I come to what I did, that man was in the service tonight. The moment you spoke those words, he stood up and walked away from the crowd, from the crusade end. I immediately told Chris, I said, you call pastor. You tell pastor what you, and, and ask him to tell you what to do with that man. <laughs> Spiritual victory. Our text. God had to get the attention of Elijah. How many of God's grace is always available to helping us tonight? The Bible declares that he is our present help in time of need. Though Elijah was discouraged, though Elijah was giving up, God was not giving up on him. He meets with his servant and he begins to bring a restoration to his mind. This is how God works. 1 Kings 19 verse 11 and 12, the Bible says, Then he says, Go out. Stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. And the Lord was in that still, small voice voice and so here we see tonight uh, the restoration process of a man who has been assaulted by the spirit of uh, witchcraft uh, through the words spoken by this wicked woman uh, and now he's running away uh, he's gone he's, he's in a confused state uh, God says uh, there is a process for me to bring you back to your senses Elijah and he tells him this uh, as he sits. Uh, the Bible says the wind uh, tears uh, into the mountains. Uh, it breaks uh, the stones and uh, the rocks into pieces. Uh, and the Lord was not in the wind. Uh, the earthquake happened uh, and the Lord was not in the earthquake. Uh, the fire came uh, and the Lord was not in the fire. But after that, a still small voice. And the Lord was in that still small voice. It was the voice of God that ultimately silenced the enemy's words in the ears of Elijah. It is the word of God that will silence the enemy's words in your life, not in the fire, not in the earthquake. Uh, thank God for all those, uh, not in the wind, uh, but in the still, small 
voice. Listen to me tonight. There is no substitute for sound biblical preaching. When you and I sit under the preaching of the word of God, there is more that happens to a man or a woman than just what meets the eye. There is a restoration. There is a bringing back to your original state as a man or a woman tonight. When you hear sound biblical preaching, listen, but there's a departure today with many churches from preaching a sound biblical a word of God up to this point it was the words of Jezebel that were ringing it was the words of Jezebel that were dominating his thoughts it was the words of Jezebel that were controlling Elijah but until this point God says I must restore you Elijah to your original position and it's the word of God that began to speak in the life of Elijah This is why our Lord Jesus spoke to his disciples and said in John 6, 63, The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. This is the unchanging truth of the power that is found in the spoken word of God. He says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and of life. They have life. Let me look lastly then at the fact that we are fighting from a place of victory. We are fighting from a place of victory. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. The Bible says, And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. The blood of the Lamb. Not some magical power. Not some divine uh, 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 intervention from earthly things that people are carrying around. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The victory he won for us on the cross. The blood is heaven's verdict on our situation tonight. I am right with God, not because of my doing. I am right with God by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is shed on the cross of Calvary. Watch how the author of Hebrews begins to describe the precious blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. There's a cleansing that comes of our conscience, of our mindsets, that comes from the blood, from the cross of Jesus Christ. Once we apply the blood from the cross, there is a shifting that begins to happen in our minds. And here the writer of Hebrews says, there is going to come a cleansing from the dead works to begin to serve God. They overcame him by appealing to heaven a verdict, a ruling, by pleading on the blood of Jesus Christ. It is on the basis of the price that he has already paid in full for my salvation. They also overcame him by the word of their testimony. Your words tonight, they matter. Your words in situations, your words in the circumstances of life, your words in the difficult times of life, your words in the struggles of life, they matter tonight. Listen to me. I don't really care about what you speak when you are having a nice time, when you are ascending. It is when you are descending. It is when things are troublesome. It is when a life is taking turbulent moments. It is what we speak in those moments that carries weight. The Bible says they overcame him by the word of their testimony. Listen to me tonight. What are you allowing to be spoken of concerning your circumstances? What words are you speaking in your marriage? Ah, it's beyond repair. Ah, I'm just there for the sake of the children. Ah, it's police children. And then when the children grow up and they leave your home, then what? 
What words are you speaking? Or what words are you allowing to be spoken over your life by close friends, by family? When they see what they don't want to see, what are they speaking? And what are you allowing them to speak into your life? by disgruntled people. Sometimes, well-meaning people can speak words that have an evil origin. Well-meaning people, unintended. In Matthew 16, gives us this idea, he explains what I'm talking about. As Jesus begins his earthly ministry, he began to speak of the will of the, of the Father to the disciples. He was highlighting to them. He says, listen, I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem. And there I will suffer many things. I will be killed. But on the third day I will rise again. What do you see? Peter steps in. He grabs Jesus to the side. And the Bible says, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. You know what the word rebuke is? <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like. It's like Shimuel. And send up somebody Shimuel. Shimuel, I'm not going to say anything. Hey, you, Pastor Simon. Hey, you. Shimuel at least is shorter than me. He's, and so he's pointing at me. Peter takes our Lord Jesus Christ and he begins to rebuke God in the flesh concerning the mission that Jesus came to accomplish, concerning his vision for mankind. And Peter says, far be it from you, Lord, that this should not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And many people are like that. They are not spiritual. That's what Jesus is saying in a nutshell. Peter, you are carnal. You are not a spiritual man. You are not seeing what I'm seeing. And how dare you begin to hinder that which God has placed in my lane. You are not seeing that, and you step in and you begin to rebuke me. There's an enemy behind your words, Peter. There's Satan behind your words. This was one of his own, a key disciple. He says, these words have not originated from my father. They are an assault from hell. Peter was a good man with good intentions. But his words were coming directly from Satan trying to derail the will of God for Jesus' life. And there are many like that. Out of our good hearts, we step into the will of God for somebody else's life. The disciple begins to rise. I mean, we're able to tell. Oh, we've been around for some time. We're able to tell when a disciple is rising. We're able to tell. And so when that is beginning to happen, some people out of ignorance, they step in and begin to give counsel which is unsolicited. Ah. Ah. Four months of marriage. When the ministry is ah, uh, at least in Kalakona to one at two minutes to at least Mangako Yumba, Ministry Mabuta, at least Pangako drama, derailing the call of God on somebody else's life.
this is not done intentionally to derail the will of God. But the devil uses those words to begin to sit on the minds of people. Brother so and so said something. And these usually are people that have got influence over our lives. <laughs> Close friends, somebody who aspire to. And when they speak, their words carry weight. Remember when my brother got saved, he was radical. In the home, he was radical and uh, he began to pray, he began to do things. We were young and I remember vividly dad sitting him down and said, this which you have started, I don't want you to spread it to your brothers and your sisters. Just keep it yourself. Thank God it's prayed. What words are you speaking in somebody else's life? In the morning, I looked at people speaking words into our lives, but now there's a shift. What words are you speaking in other people's lives? What words are you speaking concerning your ministry, concerning your church? Concerning your church. What words are you speaking to your children? Are you being mindful of the things of God or the things of man? Over your children. Psalms, one, Psalms 19 verse 14 as I begin to wind down. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. My strength and my redeemer. The words of God must be the dominating voice in our life. The words of God in 2 Corinthians 10, quoted this in the morning, verse 5, the Bible says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The words you are speaking, the thoughts you are thinking, are they in line with Jesus Christ? If not, the Bible says, they must be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The atmosphere that God is doing in our congregation, are you negating that? Or are you supporting by the words you're speaking, young disciples rising, young couples rising? Are you supportive of that? Are you speaking in the affirmative for that which is happening? Or are you beginning to speak the words of men? Are you mindful only of the things of men? There was a season in this church, I remember when I was a disciple. There was a period where entrepreneurship was more pronounced than discipleship. Nothing wrong with entrepreneurship, but we're not here to raise entrepreneurs, we're here to raise disciples. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. We have a responsibility tonight across Isaiah 54, verse 17. The Amplified Version. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. Not God. You will condemn. You have the responsibility as a child of God to rise up and identify words spoken against you and begin to bring them down. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and this is their vindication for me, says the Lord. He's already won the victory, the Bible declares. His gift is your heritage tonight, but we must condemn those words and bring those thoughts into cap captivity, bringing them into subjectivity to Jesus Christ. You and I have a responsibility tonight to do that. I want you to bow your head in respect to God and the person that is seated next to you. Thank God for you.
I appreciate God for you tonight. Tonight we're here. Thank God for the victory that Jesus won on Calvary's cross. We are walking in that victory tonight. We are children of the Most High God. He is victorious. But tonight, before I proceed, you are here, you are not right with God. You are not saved, you are not born again. Your sins are not forgiven. God wants to help you. God wants to set you free. That is you tonight. You want to surrender your heart to Jesus. Lift up your hand. I'll pray with you tonight. Thank God. Thank God. You want to surrender to Jesus. God wants to help you. He loves you. Just lift up your hands. We'll be able to see it. And I will pray with you tonight. Lift it up tonight. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I'll not tell you tonight. But you know if you are to die tonight, you will not make heaven your home. Jesus wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you. That's you. Lift up your hand. I will pray with you tonight. Thank God. Thank God. All across this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to change the order of the service. Speaking to Christians tonight. Oh, God would help us to have the victory. God would help us to have the victory tonight. He's able. He's already finished. But ours is to walk in that victory and begin to take some practical steps. He told Elijah, it's in the world, Elijah. Not in the fire, not in the earthquake, not in the wind. But your restoration is in what I speak over your life. God was speaking to life. God is speaking to you and I tonight. I want to open these orchards for men and women to come and find a place to pray. Let's lay hold of God. As we rise to our feet tonight, these orchards are open. Let's come and lay hold of God. And God is going to help us. God is going to bring a freedom. A freedom. Hallelujah. These orchards are open. Let's come as we sing a song tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, speaks a better yes, word Lord. Hallelujah. than all the earth oh, may head upon this earth yes, Jesus. speaks righteousness oh, for me thank you, Lord. stands in my yes, defense God, you do stand. Jesus it's your blood oh, your blood Testifies and oh, tells of Father's heart. God, your peace in Jesus' name. Make a way for us. Godly we are pro. Oh, Rebebe Siara. Jesus, it's your blood. Rebebe Siara. Walking oh, in the name of what Jesus, can nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash Welcome as a friend of God. Yes, Lord. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you. Your blood speaks a word. Righteousness for me starts in my defense. Jesus, it's your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you. Your oh, blood. 
testifies in praise, tales of Father's heart to make a way for us. Boldly we approach, no death reconfidence. Jesus is your blood. Thank you, Jesus. What can oh, hallelujah. What can we say? For the blood tonight. Father, we are grateful for the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Mighty God, we are grateful for redemption. We are grateful, God, for freedom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your work at Calvary's cross. The blood that still speaks better than the blood of Abel. God, we are looking to you. Rebo Sika Rababa. Shanda Raba Baba Rando Robobo Rico Sia Mande Ribaba Rende Siko Rita Rabare Rikra Raba Shando Robobo Thank you, Lord, for the victory we have in you. In the name of Jesus, a freedom God at this altar tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, he who the sun sets free is free indeed tonight. A liberty God from you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Ribro Siarande. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Austin, if you close for us, you of prayer just here where you are tonight. in liberty and victory we thank you for all that you have done in jesus name we pray amen amen god wish to bless you tonight amen